Hello, Ryan here, aka Mac, and welcome. The first Evacati patch for Alpha 324 dropped last night, and it was a beast. As always, a huge thank you to all of my patrons and channel members. Thank you all so much for the support. It is truly appreciated. So, it has been a long time coming, and from what it sounds like, it was worth the wait. Now, the initial Evacati 324 build testing focus was personal and instanced hangers, freight elevators, storage access, hover trolleys, and hangar decorations. Features that are not ready yet for testing are the cargo hauling missions, cargo commodity rebalance, and the blockade runner dynamic event. Now, firstly, let us talk about one of the bigger changes in 324 compared to previous builds, which is inventory. Now, in Alpha 324, how we interact and organize our belongings is changing forever. And this is including everything from cargo to items to ships. Basically, freight elevators will introduce a new mechanic for retrieving and storing larger items at various locations. And hangers will now be instanced. And with personal hangers, everything you leave lying around inside will persist. Ships are now spawned via the ship elevator and item banks are replacing the local inventory. Plus, they have introduced hover trolleys and hangar decorations. So big changes for everybody. Now, for the personal and instanced hangers, each hangar will create an instance of the player's hangar to allow for uninterrupted management of cargo, inventory, and vehicles. With just the personal hangers, which are the hangers that the player owns, found at the home location you choose before entering the verse, allowing for customization and organization of its interior. Basically, you get your own personal place to interact with your ships and so forth without any time frame, and you can spend as long as you want without there needing to be a queue of people waiting to use the hangar. Now, all hangars will also have an ASOP terminal, item banks, and a freight elevator, with the elevator's SEU amount dependent on the hangar size. And all hangar types have ship elevator platforms that will lower when a ship is requested by the player. And if a ship is on that hangar elevator, it will then lower and store that ship before retrieving the new ship. Also, all hangers should allow for party members to join. But if you are not a party member and you go into someone's hangar, which is possible, there, there will be a timer that will warn you that you will then be physically taken out of the hangar and spawned back at the landing zone or wherever it was, you know, the ship spawn screens. Although it sounds like that is having a bit of an issue right now. Now, personal hangers exist for the player at their selected home location only, and the size of the hangar is based on the largest ship on that player's account. And it won't scale up if a larger ship is purchased while in game. Instead, that ship will just be spawned at an instanced hangar, so not a personal hangar, which they did explain a little while back. And in personal hangers, any items left lying around inside will persist. However, items that are left on the ship's loading platform may disappear, which makes sense as it is needed to prioritize getting the requested ship. So don't place anything on the elevator floor. Make sure it is around the outside. So a great few additions there that I know myself and many others will be spending hours decorating our hangers. Plus, it will be very useful to be able to spend as much time as we need in the hangar without getting kicked, meaning that we can really make it our own. It'll feel like our own base. Plus, it means that we will have a place to work on our ships, fixing them, swapping components and weapons and loading them up with cargo and gear for as long as we need. So if you only have a small amount of time to play and you don't want to have to try and do a mission, you can just spend some time decorating, fixing your ship or getting it prepared for when you do have more time. Now, there also looks to be a ton of hangar decorations with multiple seating options like chairs and couches and tables. Even a lot of the old hangar flare appears to be available too, which is cool. Not likely all of it, as they are working through converting it all as devs have some downtime between jobs. Also, it does look like we can now attach all sorts of items to our cargo grid, so not just cargo boxes, things like furniture, ship and FPS weapons, and other items, which we knew was coming and should really help to expand on cargo hauling as a profession as well, as players can move all types of objects for themselves and for others as well. And these items will hopefully sit still on the cargo grid and not bounce around like they do in the current build. So an amazing, huge change there that is gonna be a big benefit for everyone. 
Now let us talk about freight elevators. These are used to load and unload player items or cargo physically by the player and are found in the hangars, garages and docking collars. Players will use these elevators to store any cargo that they have in their local inventory, calling it back up when they want. And now when it comes to the local inventory, which is where the cargo elevators store everything, you will no longer be able to press I and access everything you want at any location you are at. You will need to use hangers or the item banks to access it. And the same goes for ships and vehicles. No longer will there be an invisible player inventory inside. Instead, it will be physicalized and all ships will have at least some small personal inventory storage that you can store your items. And additionally, they are now adding physical inventory containers that you can purchase to store and haul larger items in your cargo hold. And when using the freight elevator kiosk, you will be able to place any items that you have into any of the boxes that you have bought. And then you can move things around and manual load or unload items to and from your ship and your hangar or elevator. And these boxes can be bought from the commodity kiosks, which offer various SEU sizes of containers, obviously ranging in price, which you can then choose to have loaded onto your ship automatically which will have an alpha UEC cost and time duration to it, and it will also make your ship inaccessible during that process. Now, this is probably one of the more major changes that has always been the plan to get your inventory physicalized, having no magical method of accessing your stuff, uh, which I get for some people might feel a little long-winded, but now that ships don't have these magic inventories that only the owner can access, when finding abandoned ships, or even not abandoned if you're that way inclined, chances are there will be loot on board to take now, be that player owned items or items that they have found and sort of looted and stored in their ship. And also now that the cargo grids can pretty much hold almost anything, we won't just be finding potential cargo boxes of commodities in ships, we may find things like furniture and other items and even SEU boxes of varying sizes with personal effects in as well that players have put in. So looting and this kind of organic gameplay off-grid stuff that many of us love will result in potentially far more interesting and lucrative discoveries, which is just going to be amazing. Now let's talk about hover trolleys and hangar decorations. Hover trolleys can now be purchased at cargo decks in space stations or dumpers depot at landing zones and they can be stored and retrieved via the freight elevators and can now be used to navigate rougher terrain than the wheeled options. So if you think about it, you can combine the ability to buy cargo boxes of various sizes with these hover trolleys, which means looting places like underground facilities, derelict settlements, or the new settlements will be an absolute breeze pushing these trolleys with the cargo boxes on to and from locations that you can then loot rather than having to run back and forth to your ship. Not to mention, being able to buy hover trolleys in game, I will certainly be picking up a few for my hangar and my appropriate ships. Now for hangar decorations, you can purchase all manner of items at the Kelto stores and dumpers depots, uh, and then retrieve these via your hangar freight elevators, placing them anywhere inside your personal hangar. And these items will have full in interactions as well, so they're not just visual props. So there is also quite a lot of other stuff in this 324 EVO build. Firstly, there is also a ton of cargo missions coming, including reputation levels. However, as mentioned in the patch notes, these changes are not ready for testing or feedback, so little is known about how they will play out. Also, they have added ESP dampening strength modifiers to game settings. The Mobiglass contract app has had a UI polish. They have made further minor flight controller tuning changes to most ships for afterburner and SEM speeds, increased the RSI Mantis engine attachment health, rebalanced its emissions, and greatly increased the health on all ship gimbal sizes as well. So quite the patch. Now I have yet to try it as it dropped very late last night, and unfortunately they intended to take it down around 10pm CDT, so it's no longer available to jump on. But if you are Eva Catty and you have played this latest patch, please feel free to share your experience in the comments below. Of course, don't link any gameplay or footage as that is still against the Eva Catty NDA, but you are now okay to talk about your experience, so feel free to do so. Now we will certainly be chatting more about Alpha 324 
over at twitch.tv forward slash supermacbrother. The link is in the description. I will be live today at 2 p.m. BST, so feel free to come and join in. You are all more than welcome over there. But I am over the moon now that the 324 patch has finally begun its rollout, as I cannot wait to get playing. Also, there is only one week left to pick up the Toby Eye Tracker 5 at 15% off until it goes back to full price. And using that link in the description will take you to that deal, plus provide me with a direct kickback. So thank you so much if you have done so already. And don't worry if you can't get one this time, there will be many more sales to come, which I will be sure to let you all know. But with that said, if you do enjoy my videos, please do consider subscribing and helping the channel to grow. Hit the thumbs up if you don't mind, judge the channel a big favour, and tick that notification bell if you would like to be notified when my videos go live. Again, a huge thank you to my patrons and channel members. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.